So today we came to see Tolga's house here on the island. It's an amazing place. But another important point why we are here that we are making an interview today uh, about farming. Uh, farming in Turkey, farming in Fethiye. Why in Fethiye and what we are doing here. My brother and Mr. Tolga is pushing too much on this issue and their team. Uh, and so it's you know better the issue why why you are doing farming in turkey why you are what is the idea behind it uh, i wouldn't call it an issue it's an excitement uh -huh. uh, especially in this region we have uh, around 290 sunny days every year and we have the subtropical climate it's free of charge free of charge <laughs> no and even in this 21st century, there we have huge, enormous water supply. So wherever we go in Fethiye region, we have unlimited water supply, and we have mild, warm weather throughout the year, and a lot of sunshine. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it depends on the crop or the variety what you are growing. Mm -hmm. But we are uh, experts on tomatoes. We are growing tomatoes for about 10 years now. And why I'm talking about sunshine and water? Because the tomato is really depending on those two mm -hmm. and warm weather. We say 1% more sunshine is 1% more yield. Uh, what is the uh, Turkey capacity for tomato in the world and Fethiye in Turkey? Uh, in Turkey overall tomato production is uh, 12,000, sorry, 12 million tons every year. Uh, in Tur the world? Turkey is second biggest oh. producer in the world. That's very important. Both for table tomatoes which we eat at home and also second for the industrial processed tomatoes. Mm -hmm. On both sides, the, fir the first country is different. Mm -hmm. For table tomatoes, which we consume at home, is America, United States is number one, Turkey is second, mm -hmm. and the third is Mexico. Mm -hmm. For industrial tomatoes, China is number one, Turkey is second, and United States is the third one. What is surprising me is, look at this view, it's an amazing place, it's a touristic place. You can grow tomato maybe anywhere in Turkey, uh, on this, uh, where it has the sun. Uh, but the interesting thing, your, your cost of land is like four, five dollars per meter square. So if you are buying today and growing tomato in this land, maybe 10, 20 years later, the, these prices of these land can go 10 times more. So it's also long-term investment while we are growing tomato, isn't it? Yeah, as our the broker... Mm -hmm. I am a, looking the real estate... Yeah, yeah you made a good statement here. Uh, yes, the property prices in this region is going up much higher, much quicker than other parts of Turkey. Because it's very limited. Mm -hmm. We are surrounded by the Taurus mountains and the flatland is not unlimited. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can also ask why to invest in farming in this region, although the prices are higher than other regions. Mm -hmm. Because there is a good idea behind this. The energy costs, the heating cost here is absolutely minimal mm -hmm. even zero you don't have to heat the greenhouses yeah um, the um, carbon footprint of farming is actually coming from the heating mm -hmm. so if you go to central anatolia or northwest turkey you have to heat your uh, greenhouses almost five six months a year mm -hmm. on the other hand in this region sometimes we need three four days not days three four nights so it's limited to 
few hours a year, mm -hmm. which makes a huge saving in your energy cost. Mm -hmm. That energy cost can compensate the difference in the initial investment on the land. And as you rightly mentioned, the land goes up anyway. Yeah. So it's a double win. Even you do something you don't, it's growing yes. land. Yes. And this region also has advantages. Uh, Fethiye region is a huge tomato hub mm -hmm. and our <coughs> export markets like Russia, Eastern Europe or lately Western Europe or maybe buyers come here and as there are many growers <coughs> they can find what they want and for, the, for a long while in the year. So maybe we can ask some questions from him. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, uh, I want to ask, um, what is the Fethiye capacity if you compare to the Turkey? Fethiye is uh, an important player in the. Fethiye alone is maybe a third of the overall Turkish tomato production. Mm -hmm. But uh, in winter months, from December to April. This region is growing almost 90% of the uh, domestic production. It's important. Yeah. And why? The climate. Mm -hmm. It's not too hot, it's not too cold. It's the perfect climate uh, for tomato. Yeah. So, if I am a foreigner, how to buy a farmland as a foreigner? We have... Uh, and I can explain as a real estate agent. Um, First of all, in Turkey, foreigners cannot buy farmlands directly in their name. Mm -hmm. They have to set up a Turkish company. And you already explained how to set up a company as a foreigner. So if you set up a Turkish company, then it's a Turkish identity. And you can uh, buy a farmland as big as you want. Mm -hmm. There is small paperwork. We just uh, do it. Uh, it's from Mullah government. We get permission. Um, there is a very special detail if the subjected farmland is in the center of the village which is rarely available then foreigner can buy directly on his name mm -hmm. this is this knowledge is very uh, important because uh, most of the foreigners don't know this and you can catch great deals like big piece of land but in the planning permission of the village center mm -hmm. and you can buy the farmland directly on your name and maybe develop an agriculture investment on it or make a house or what you want to do your country mm -hmm. yeah. farm anything yeah that's a very good tip actually very good tip exactly yeah, yeah. because in the urbanization areas yes of the villages those are usually very small areas um, you can build which is uh, planned or the idea behind this is for the villagers to have their houses and nearby farms so that's not purely farmland that's an urbanization yes. land and has big features for yes potential. so anyone can buy it and when it comes to um, setting up a company and buying a farmland on the name of the company is a uh, it's not just cutting a corner when you set up a Turkish company under Turkish uh, trade. trade law and trade codes. Yes. So it's basically a Turkish company. It's hundred percent yes. Turkish. The nationality, uh, the nationality of the companies are not coming from the shareholders. It's true where and how they are set. Mm -hmm. So when you own a Turkish company, you have all the rights as another company with Turkish partners. For example, I am a foreigner and I would like to enter this farming business, but I am living in another country. How much money I should spare to enter this business? And would you, your team will manage this for us? Uh. How much money? That's a and difficult minim question. Minimum yeah. entrance budget, uh, what should be? Or ticket. Minimum ticket. 
um, of course, it's a scale business. Mm -hmm. You can start very small, but it will not be as profitable as a medium or larger scale company. Small farms cannot make money mm -hmm. when they are run professionally. Um, when you have a team running your company, you must have at least medium or larger scales. Mm -hmm. I don't mean a huge scale, but even the startup should be around medium. Mm -hmm. I think when that is with the Turkish law, I think for citizenship applications, which was one of your videos, yes. you should invest minimum uh, half million half million dollars. If it is a company, if it is a name, title B, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, uh, half million dollars is plenty if you are investing for is it walnuts. A good start? It's a huge, huge good start mm -hmm. and government is giving incentives uh, this is yes almost every year there are uh, investment incentives mm -hmm. you will be take you will have tax exempts minimum income you should tax exempts do i think 40000 square meter. for greenhouses um, you should spend for the first level of incentives yes uh, your investment must be at least 1 million liras plus vat but for a better class uh, incentive program, you must have 40,000 square meters of greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And this is the best type you catch the. Yeah, that's a very, uh, Yeah, that's a good optimized uh, size. So can we say that this size 40,000 meters square greenhouse costs like one million dollars? 1.1 to 1.2 million dollars, well, including the land, including the land, greenhouse, all the infrastructure, mm -hmm. your key power delivery connection. Equipment. Yeah, turnkey cost can will not exceed. So let's say I put on the table 1.2 million dollars today. What is the expected return on investment yearly? Or how many years will be the returning all the investment back to the farming? Here I will I would ask you a few questions. Are you going to be able to come here and control it yourself? No, or I, you I want will to not assign a professional sign, team. Sign a professional team. Consultancy. Uh, you want to take some risks or you want to take no risks or uh, little risks? I will leave it to you. Uh, because yes we know how to grow tomatoes and we know this business here for almost 10 years but uh, growing tomatoes is a labor intensive business mm -hmm. you must be ready on the spot and there is no room for errors in mm -hmm. tomato business if you can make it if you can run a tomato business properly it's very profitable mm -hmm. you can have uh, your all investment back in your pocket in less than five years it means you cannot do it in years and plus you will have your land which will cost it will be putting on yeah, it. which value will be increasing another uh, option which so can we see it from the five years 20% return on investment? Easily. 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 Um, Is that including the management costs? Uh, with if the we have, as we talked before, if you have a medium or larger scale, yes. you can cover the overhead management costs. In the, in the but if you try this with uh, 5,000 square meters greenhouse, yes. you will have no chance to cover your mentors. Mm -hmm your CEO. It's like one agricultural engineer will look 5,000 or 40,000. Yes. You will hire the same so engineer. Your costs per square meters must be optimized at mm -hmm. some level. Mm -hmm. uh, lately, in the last five years, growing bananas in Turkey, in greenhouses, also growing avocados in greenhouses is coming, becoming mm -hmm. popular. I think the business models are a bit different each other yes um, the initial investment is less in both bananas and avocados mm -hmm. but the uh, return of the money starts later after three years in bananas after one one and a half years but oh. in avocados first three years 
you just spend money, you don't get anything back. But, but later, after three speed years, you speed up. Yeah. I would prefer avocado. As a minister. Yeah. My suggestion will be avocado. Mm -hmm. Because very little less risk annual costs, mm -hmm. almost no risk. Mm -hmm. and, and longer staying on the land. Every year it will bring you more and more yield. Mm -hmm. uh, the world population is increasing. All the even pandemic, mm -hmm. even coronavirus is not all this food is the biggest need. Yeah. Every year we need more food, mm -hmm. we need more farmlands, but the uh, arable lands is only sh shrinking, mm -hmm. it's not expanding. Also, Togi is a multitasking person, uh, gr uh, his school is, he graduated from electric, electronic uh, major from the university. Besides making green, growing uh, tomato on the greenhouses, you do also agriculture factories yes um, tomato drying factory one of the experience we did together yeah, uh, it's part of the food industry let's say mm -hmm, or food industry. vegetable industry agro industry yeah today uh, in all over the world food waste is a major problem 30 percent of all the vegetables and fruits are going to waste when we consume them fresh mm -hmm. so what, one way what our grandmothers was doing tomato paste or the drying on the sun sun drying them so if you can preserve the products fresh products by either freezing them drying them canning them or marinating them it it will have uh, two to three year shelf life mm -hmm. unlike three to four days shelf life and easier carry for export uh, yeah. and uh, it converts a farming uh, production into um, a commodity mm -hmm. so when you have dried products when you have frozen products mm -hmm. when you have canned products the price is very stable uh, one issue. Uh, Can you give an example, like a per kilo tomato price in dollar and the dry tomato price? Um, fresh tomato price can vary th through the season from one lira to seven, eight liras. To make it um, easier to understand. easier to understand in dollars, it can ten cents to one dollar. Yeah, fifteen cents to one dollar. Mm -hmm because in summer there is more yield and so and if we uh, buy 15 cent tomato in summer take it in the factory sell it in the winter uh, is all over the year yeah. so processing the cheaper tomatoes or mm -hmm. cheaper bananas or oranges or aubergine eggplants mm -hmm. um, when it's really cheap and waste in the region and selling them throughout the year is a very profitable uh, business idea. Mm -hmm. So when it is dried, what is the uh, kilogram uh, loss and the price for selling? Mm -hmm. The price of the dried tomatoes will be f almost fixed. Mm -hmm because it's a commodity as i said before sun-dried tomatoes will be around three dollars a kilo in the wholesale market market i mean 10 tons 100 tons or thousand tons uh, semi-dried frozen will be a similar price two euros to three euros uh, but that's always profitable mm -hmm. because you will you can see what's your cost and what's your target price from day one you buy it 15 cents how many kilo gives uh, you need six to seven kilos to have one kilo yeah. of final product so plus of course you will need some labor energy packing mm -hmm. material freezing yeah but when you com make your commodity a good quality commodity the 
in the long run we are becoming a brand on the market. Demand from the market is almost unlimited. Mm -hmm. um, and Tur Turkey is the biggest producer. Turkey is the number one producer. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. The broker. <laughs> uh, Turkey is the biggest sun-dried and semi-dried tomato producer mm -hmm. in the world. Um, for sun-dried, America and China is producing too, but Turkey, Turkish tomatoes have good quality. Usually we always say Italian tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, and we... When I first heard this mm -hmm. a lot, everywhere in the world, I was estimating Italy is a huge producer. Actually, overall Italian production is 8% of Turkish production. <laughs> Nothing. So we are, the our so production are is 13 times bigger. So they are consuming more tomato than what, what they they're growing. Yeah, what they export is usually from Spain mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. other, uh, Their marketing northern, is good northern Africa, Tunisia. Uh, so they eat spaghetti with Turkish tomato? I hope Most so. Probably. That's very nice. <laughs> they will enjoy it. <laughs> I think one of the good advantage for agriculture, uh, farming agriculture, is um, you do not have a risk of illness in the tomato. You buy the healthy tomato and you dry it, so you don't have this risk when there is growing. Uh, yes, and even the profitability is the much higher. Much higher and. Uh, calculatable, mm -hmm. but I don't. You, you think, need I'm not a sure know-how. That's a proper English word. What you mm -hmm. can understand? You can calculate the risk. Yeah. That's very important in engineering. So maybe we can conclude. Uh, is there anything you want to add? No, I'm happy to be part of your video. Thank you, thank you for. I'm also a fan. Us. I'm following him. <laughs> you too. Follow him too. Yes. Uh, Please subscribe to my channel. <laughs> my brother Don and Mr. Tolga. It was an amazing day on the sunset. Yes. We enjoyed a lot, and the topic was very important. We should do more meetings in this uh, table, yeah. yes. please. No barbecue. Also. <laughs> thank you so, for inviting us. Thank you for watching us. Uh, this video, the idea was explaining to you the farming business, agriculture industry also, which is so unique, which. Mr. Tolga is doing. So if you are interested in, you can contact us. I can make you a join group with Tolga and my brother for this issue. So if you have any questions, please ask to us. We cannot say anything in this video because it will be long and long if you <laughs> say everything. If you have anything on your mind, please ask these questions. See you on the next video. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.